this episode, I'm going to start off with what I think is really the most powerful food system you could possibly put in a small backyard space. However, additional episodes of this series will be largely focused on various fruit trees, sugarcane, banana, mango, coconut, and much more. So I hope you will join the ride and subscribe if you're not already. Okay, so in this video, we're gonna talk about the number one system. In fact, we've got one of the little members of the system here who has escaped the pen, Blondie. That is chickens. Wow, what a good decision it was to add chickens. And if you're wondering how much goodness one chicken can produce, well, really, you never really would have one chicken. You'll almost always have a small flock. I'd say a typical number is probably four or five, maybe six chickens in a small backyard. Uh, with that amount of chickens, you can easily expect to generate over 100 eggs a month. And depending on what you feed them, those might be some of the highest nutrition things you have in your diet and you and your family's diet. And that's what we're going to really dive into in this video is these little hens, what do they produce? What are the, the types of eggs? Uh, what are some things we know about when to eat eggs and how to eat eggs in a way that gives you the maximum boost from them? And uh, look at this. This is my little egg harvesting method. I just take a plastic bag from the grocery store and stick it inside a deep bowl, plastic bowl. All right, so let's start off by actually seeing what these hens have produced in the coop. I built from scratch because I couldn't find anything that I really wanted to uh, rely on in terms of ventilation and nothing was even close so I decided to build it myself it was quite a process since I'm not a carpenter certainly hello ladies oh, yes. you think I have treats for you well that comes later okay let's see what they have produced I heard them clucking. There was a bit of a cluckery out here. All right, put that up on top of the roof. By the way, stay tuned for the chicken coop build video. That one I'm editing right now. Just like any good little farm, you gotta jiggle it. All right, what do we have here? Oh yeah, I actually, I was making a video earlier and I, I think I scared Ponzi out of the thing, and an egg was laying in here. Luckily, I have recently cleaned the bedding, so this egg didn't get fouled, hopefully, with uh, any bacteria. You can see that's still a clean looking egg. Hey, are you picking at my feet? If you wear flip flops out here, they are every time picking at your toes very lightly. There you go. But that's a decent size egg for sure. Okay, so. <laughs> The day has just begun. Oops, wow, she flew up in there. The day has just begun and we have one, two, three. Look at how dark that egg is. Wow. Put those up in the... Good job, Blondie, or is it your turn to go in there? Good thing to know about eggs, first of all, as we look at these eggs. This is the absolute perfect nutritional food. It's designed to feed a new living organism. It's got vitamin D, calcium, protein, complex amino acids. These eggs are soon to have omega-3 fats in them, fatty acids, because I'm going to start feeding these hens flaxseed, which contains omega-3, and you can actually make omega-3 eggs that are incredibly good for you, as if the eggs themselves alone were not good enough. Now, I'm gonna talk about what I feed the chickens to 
produce the highest nutrition egg I can without overdoing it because you don't want to overfeed the chicken high nutrient stuff. That's another thing. You kind of need to dial it into the right level. And you know, when you're getting eggs like this, this is going to have a nice thick shell. Look at that. That is a perfect brown egg. That came from one of those little golden hybrids, Rhode Island red hybrids. And you know, I, can't, I couldn't be happier. That's a full on regular size egg. And uh, when they first started laying eggs, they were a little small, but uh, they've gotten right up to this size in no time. You know, a few weeks, they're, they're off and running. Um, but you know, what I feed them to get the eggs to the maximum nutritional value for us to eat is, uh, I feed them the black soldier fly larva that I get from Grub Terra. Shout out to Grub Terra. Uh, I'll remember to put links in the description so you can get Grub Terra grubs. They feed all of their grubs food waste, so it's a really cool way to get them, and the hens love them. But anyway, they're super high in all kinds of minerals, but calcium specifically and other things. So I give them that almost every single day, snack on a scratch food. We also let them free range uh, back in a pasture area, so to speak, where they get bugs and they get weeds uh, of all kinds, natural plants of all kinds we throw in there. Anything that I pick that you would might think of as weeds in the backyard, I throw into the chicken coop and they chow it down. They love that. And the weeds that we have, so to speak, in the backyard of just really Florida native edibles is what we could call them, grasses. You know, it's, it amounts to hay, uh, have a lot of nutrients in them. And the reason is because we don't just have this as the animal component in our yard. In your backyard, we also have bunnies. And bunnies produce a type of manure, which although chickens produce incredibly valuable manure, it does need to be composted, etc. It's kind of dirty in a way. Uh, so it's much easier to use a cold manure, so to speak, this hot manure that chickens make get a compost it. Cold manure is when you don't need to compost it, you can just apply it directly. Well, the bunnies make that type and we put it on the grass and then we feed the grass to the hens. So that makes course the eggs high in nutrition and uh, outside of that we give them supplements I have two supplements I'll go show you in the coop how I built them oh by the way you might be wondering why are there golf balls in there and that's because I want to really encourage all the birds to go lay their eggs in there although they're already doing it I don't think it hurts to have the golf balls in there still for a little while just kind of encourage them that hey this is where the eggs always go and they certainly instinctively go up there. The way that I have this organized now, once I let them out in the morning, about 8 a.m., they uh, they stay able to, to enter a much larger free-range area of my backyard. Uh, this whole area here and this healthy backyard corner of my yard filled with all kinds of bugs and organic material that I continuously compost and put in there. Very much inspired by the approaches used on the Edible Acres channel. Uh, that guy is uh, you know, really industrious and has some cool techniques that I've tried to incorporate here. Oh, hear that? That might be my fifth egg of the day. Five chickens, five eggs. That's about the rate I've been experiencing. Uh, yesterday I got five eggs. The day before I had four, but before that five. So I keep track. I always remember the last three days of egg production, but it's almost always five. All right, so let's take a look at the at the unit I built to give them the two supplements I feed the chickens. And the only two things I really so the only two things we feed them as supplements are one is grit, and grits grits needed for chickens to digest their food, just crushed granite. And the other thing is, oh yeah, they're curious about me being inside their coop. Uh, this is crushed oyster shell, and that's for calcium. So it's almost pure calcium carbonate, and they chow that down. That helps them make good quality eggs. You know, they'll go in and peck at that stuff and eat it when they uh, when they need it. Oh, really? Look at this. One of the barred rocks is really speaking up. Oh, I know why, too. It's because my wife is out there. They are such spoiled hands. Yeah, you're making it. You're making it. See the way she does it? The way she got right down? She's such a good hen. That's because they think we're the rooster. They come over and do that. That means, yeah, and that makes for happy hens, I do believe. They're such sweet little hens, but they will uh, actually start to uh, start to 
get chatty when people they know give them treats like my wife come out because they know you know hey if they're asking for it they're probably gonna get it the leftover you know we keep all of our food waste and feed them almost all of our food waste so they have a very diverse diet we eat typically pretty healthy stuff so they get all that healthy stuff and it's returned right back in so what an incredible system all right now we're going to talk about the four types of eggs and what you can generally get three of these types of eggs in your local grocery store the fourth type are much harder and this is a way you can get them by having your own chickens and then to end the video i'll do a quick summary on what it takes to get these chickens going if you were interested in getting the process started and by the way if you like this kind of content go ahead and leave me a comment let me know what you think if you have chickens share your experience okay now let's get on to the next and here's a good example of another nutritious thing we feed to our chickens we also feed them a lot of fresh fruit that grows in the yard mulberries figs Jamaican cherries, Barbados cherries, et cetera, et cetera, which are all very high in antioxidants and vitamins and minerals. And then we also feed them this moringa as well as pigeon pea leaves. So a lot of, this is very, very high nutrient. Okay, so the four types of eggs are, first type is the regular common store-bought agricultural mass-produced egg that is fed corn mostly only or grain only, but mostly corn. And that's the standard egg you expect to find in the store. They have a rather thin shell, etc. cetera. Uh, they are proportionately, you know, less nutrient dense than farm uh, other types of eggs, although they're still very, very good for you. The next type is pasture raised, meaning that the hens are able to, you know, I don't know, free graze, free range, they're able to eat natural bugs, exposed to natural bacterias. They are um, certainly eating a lot of natural plants, that kind of thing. So that, that makes them pasture. So that's another, you'll see in the grocery store, if you look, uh, there are now, most grocery stores I go to have eggs, which are verified to be pasture raised. Okay, so that makes them better, higher quality, and they cost more. Now the third type of egg is the organic egg, and that just means you know no antibiotics, no uh, no non-organic foods in their diet, and that's certainly the case with these birds up to this point. You know uh, there is a possibility we would have to use an antibiotic, maybe you know if they got sick or something. That's something we've watched for we watch for, but that's always a possibility, you know, but that's different. You stop harvesting the eggs for that period of time. You, you get, get the chickens better because that, that kind of stuff can end up killing all the chickens and we don't want that. So there is a time when you might have to, you know, uh, employ some the medical assistance of tractor supply or something. It's a pretty common thing. You know, chickens get colds like, so you want to treat it. Okay. Now the fourth type of egg is the ultimate egg in the egg championship, the egg rankings of the world and that is the omega-3 fatty acids egg that omega-3 you might have heard of certainly for heart health um, widely acknowledged as an incredible nutritional thing to to have in your diet can be accessed in lots of things like uh, north atlantic fish and all that kind of stuff so there's ways to get it but uh it is actually present in some plants and flax seed is one one plant that is rich in omega-3 so if you feed your and I guess it's the nutritional you know elements needed to make an omega-3 in an egg or in that plant so when you feed that to your hens you get eggs which contain the omega-3 so now it's like the ultimate heart health nutritional egg okay so those are the four types and uh, I'd say I'm stoked to have almost the highest quality type we can achieve and I'll let you know how that goes now I want to give you a quick summary of what my recent experiment with eggs has resulted in I decided to start eating two eggs a day and I actually based on the research I had access to decided to start eating two eggs a day earlier in the day uh, between the hours of 7 a.m. and 10 a.m. every day have two eggs and also cook them in the uh, non 
high temperature method, which is poaching them by poaching them. By the way, I'm a huge fan of poaching eggs now. And uh, so I did. I poached two eggs. I ate them with an English muffin, toasted, and a couple slices of avocado, which is all good stuff for you. That's a very low calorie. And that had an amazing effect on me. First of all, shortly after eating the eggs, I felt an incredible boost of energy every single time. And that correlates with the research related to eggs, which say that it is directly correlated with muscle function. Eggs are very good for you. It's very safe to eat absolutely up to three eggs a day, probably more. They just don't, haven't researched eating more than that a day. Um, but it lowers your bad cholesterol, increases your good cholesterol, which you absolutely need. It has vitamin D, it has calcium, it has all the vitamins and minerals you basically need. And boy, I felt incredible every day after eating those eggs. So now I have been easily convinced that I need to continue that. So I've been eating eggs every single day and I feel great as a result. I feel much more full throughout the day as well. So, wow, not long. And now I'm already really, really plugged into this system, eating it and having it improve my diet and nutrition. I think perhaps I might've been nutrient deficient in some way to have that effect from eating eggs simply, but also it's affected the way I look at intermittent fasting. I'm big on not eating breakfast and fasting and having just the eating window be as small as possible, but I feel better when I have this protein boost in the morning and I feel I don't have to eat until later in the day. So I give that 500 calorie shot of pure goodness to the body and then I eat a healthy big meal in the evening. And that's been working out really good. But yeah, chickens are the ultimate production of food system. I know this now. I craved having chickens and now that I have them and they, the food is making me feel so good, I can almost think that maybe it was intended, it was like a craving that I had to get this, these nutrients into my life and I'm stoked that I have. And you can see these little hens are just like really mellow. This is Blondie, she just took a, took a dust bath and she's chilling next to the mulberry cutting they ate down to nothing. <laughs> They love the mulberry leaves. But we've got plenty more mulberry trees growing everywhere else. But yeah, just really good addition to the yard. And uh, they don't smell. This cage does not smell. We just put wood chips down and keep it clean. And it's really about the only negative has been the uh, occasional chattiness of the birds. They you know, do the cluck fest sometimes, a cackle fest. Uh, when they're laying eggs, they get excited or whatever, but that never lasts for that long. And then they're pretty quiet throughout the rest of the day. So, you know, small price to pay. I hope uh, you know, they just continue to be healthy producers in this backyard forest. Now you can get four chickens uh, very inexpensively. We paid about $4 a chick for these, but that, you know, that's on the high end of what you pay probably. Uh, but let's say you pay about that much per chicken. Uh, four chickens is definitely enough to produce like I said, 100 eggs a month. And, uh, you know, really all you need to have is a coop, a closed coop area where they can be sheltered at night and get up on a perch and sleep. You know, they just want to get up on a perch and all fall asleep in a row. They do that instinctively. So, you know, that's what this does for them. And it's completely, you know, predator proof to the maximum extent possible. So they're not going to get eaten at night. That's a big chicken issue, predatory issues. We don't have a lot of predators around here, but we do have raccoons that wander through from time to time. And I don't want these chickies harmed at night while I'm sleeping. And then during the day, of course, we let them roam more freely and uh, no problem there. We open up the, the coop and they have access to this entire backyard area. Um, makes for, I think, happy, mellow chickens. And uh, yeah, so you would need about four square feet per chicken inside the coop, at least where I live, that's the requirement. So we got that. And then the other thing is, um, you know, I think a good sheltered caged in area outside of the coop. Now I chose to elevate this coop up for a lot of reasons, uh, but it's much more functional. The hens love to go under here and shade and we put some water down below they can get to. Um, but when, when it's bad weather, we can simply coop them up into this part and they don't have to be restricted to their hen house. So I like that. They still get the freedom. Now, you know, you don't really want your chicken that's getting wet that much, I would claim. But, you know, hopefully they're smart enough to seek shelter. Mine generally do. Not all chickens really do. So it depends. But, uh, you know, I'd say you want to give them maximum chance. Here they tend to want to be up under when it's raining, which I like. So... 
you know, if they're out here, they might just get confused and kind of sit in the rain. If the chicken's in the rain long enough, it can get wet, like the under feathers can get wet, and that's not good because most chickens will be fine, but you know, it just increases the chance that they're gonna get a cold or ha catch some kind of bug they've had. Their immune system will be low if they start to get cold. We don't want the chickens to ever get cold. That's when bad things happen. Now look at this. Here's one of the joys of in addition to the eggs, the pet value of chickens. Look at these little chickens drinking from the water in the shade. We have a water, we provide clean water for them all over the place, so no matter where they are, they're close access to water. We have read that that is one of the most important things for chickens is to have access to clean, fresh water. All the time. They drink an incredible amount of water for their size. So you wanna make sure they have access to that. So we've actually got three watering areas for them, which is a bit overdoing it, but yeah, it works for us. You can see most of the day they're very quiet. I mean, they're not making any noise at all. But at the times they do make noise, they, they do get a little chatty. So that always makes me nervous. I don't want to make any of the neighbors upset, but I think they'll be all right. Anybody who asks me about the chickens, I offer eggs. That's my approach. All right, so I hope maybe this motivated you to consider having backyard chickens. Uh, the last thing I'll talk about is just the, you know, how do you, so if you, if you construct some kind of coop they can perch in and some kind of enclosed area in wire to whatever extent you want to do, then you, you know, you can obviously care for them. And I'm going to make other videos on specifically on how to care for them. So let me know in the comments if you, if you want any specific content covered in that area. But uh, you need to also check to make sure that you can have chickens in your zoning area. It's a bummer to say that, but you know, uh, legalized chickens 2021, hopefully you've got legalized chickenry in your zone that you can are allowed to have the right to have a food producing system like this in your life. I claim it's your right. So, you know, maybe assert it. Maybe if you don't have it, be the person that goes to city hall and makes that so you can get a permit with some reasonable rules, which many towns already have established and have your own ability to have chickens in your backyard. If you already have the ability, we'll get a permit, figure out what the rules are, and do it. You know, that's what I've done here. And uh, I love it. I feel it is uh, certainly an enriching part of my life in more ways than one. Nutritionally, uh, the pet value, my son and wife and daughter all love to come out here and play with these little mini dinosaurs. and. Uh, I found them to be rather easy to care for. So you'll be seeing them on the channel here for a while, certainly because if we get a hurricane that comes through and all that, these will be part of our survival adventure, so to speak. <laughs> yeah. All right. I hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching Eat Your Backyard. Eat an egg. Eat an egg on an empty stomach, a poached one. Let me know how you feel.